Welcome to another edition of Panther Sports Talk right here on WIU. On today's program, we'll talk to EIU head football coach Dino Babers, also a season preview with women's basketball coach Debbie Black, and then we'll end the program with some highlights from the Hall of Fame win over Tennessee Tech. All that and much more coming up on Panther Sports Talk after this. Production for Panther Sports Talk is brought to you in part by Johnson's Automotive Service is a proud supporter of Panther Sports on WEIU. Johnson's is a complete car facility for all your automotive repair and maintenance needs. Johnson's Automotive Service, keeping your life running. Welcome to another edition of Panther Sports Talk right here on WIU. I'm your host, Rich Moser. We're joined every week by EIU head football coach Dino Babers. And coach, coming off a big weekend against Tennessee Tech, the Hall of Fame game. I know Hall of Fame games mean a little bit special, especially when you have guys coming back. On Thursday night, we did the coaches show over there at the Brick House. And Scott McGee, one of the all-time great receivers, came back. So I'm sure getting to meet a guy like that was special. I don't know if you had interacted with Scott previously, but he's kind of a character. You know, mm -hmm. I, I have met Scott before, but anytime you get a alumni coming back that really care about the program, you know that his heart is, bleeds blue and gray, and he's all about the EIU, and to have him come and talk about where the program is now and the things that we're doing and how excited he is uh, being back here, even though he lives in, in the state of Tennessee and, and does all the things he does in the music business, it was exciting to see him. And I was, I, was, uh, I was tickled to death to meet him, especially since uh, Eric Lord just recently went past his records last year, and Eric loved meeting him. Now, funny you said that. I was going to segue you, Scott McGee, into Eric Laura. During the program, Mike Brad, who did the show with you, he said Scott McGee was the Eric Laura of his day, or nowadays Eric Laura is the Scott McGee of his day. Eric Laura, another record-setting day, and I guess by standards that he set last year, it's finally where he got back to where he was last year, but part of that is by design that teams have tried to take him out and other guys have been able to step up this year, but I know you're happy that he kind of was able to have a big day there at home. You know, he's such a big part of our offense. He's such a big part of our program. He's such a big part of everything that's been started here. I remember the first day I saw him on the football field, I said, we're going to build our football team around this guy. It's the same thing I said about Jimmy Garoppolo, and he's put so much effort in and to, to see him finally have – an Eric Laura type day in 2013. Not that any of those other days were bad, any of those other games were bad before, but for him to get some of the recognition uh, that he should, that he should and deserves to get based off the type of football player he is. I thought that was uh, really cool. Now last year, 136 catches set the FC, FCS single season record. 87 catches this year, and I know at the start of the year, you kind of talked that, you know, he was probably going to be in that 100 catch range and you're kind of with three games left, he, he is in that range. But if you were to make a run in the playoffs, there's a chance he could still challenge that 136 again. You know, when we started off early, people were doubling him. They were doing uh, creating special defenses for him. And uh, uh, Adam Drake, Keandre, uh, Lee Pack, all the other receivers were taking advantage of what people were doing to uh, stop Eric. And now since the growth of Keandre, this, the growth of Lee Pack, the uh, un unbelievable growth of Adam Drake, those receivers have now warned enough attention that they can't double and do the things that they were doing to Eric earlier. And that helped Eric have that uh, Eric Laura type day that we saw on Saturday. And hopefully we'll have uh, more days like that to come. Now he has set the FC or the single season FCS record. He set the EIU record. He set the OVC record. He's slowly climbing up the FCS career top 25. I don't know that he'll get to number one unless he was have a lot of catches and you guys are going to make a deep playoff run. But the guy he's going to catch next is a household name. Jerry Rice is five catches away from Eric Laura. And I know when you mentioned that, that, his face lights up. I mentioned that to you and you watch Jerry Rice play. You grew up watching him play. He's from your era. I mean, to have those two in the same conversation is kind of almost unthinkable to somebody that watches football. You know, it's so flattering because Jerry Rice is the guy. I mean, when we were growing up, or even as a coach, his work ethic, 
uh, having a wide receiving coach background like I do, the way he ran routes, the way he went about his business, the way he went about his off season to have an opportunity to be successful during the season, everything about him first class, professional, humble, all the way through. And all those, all those adjectives is what you use to describe Eric Laura. Just a, a worker brings his, brings his, brings his, his, his hard hat and his, and his lunch pail to work and works every single day. When you see him at the practice field, it's like he's playing a game. He's having so much fun. And uh, he always has something crazy to say. Some of it makes sense, some of it doesn't. But uh, you're never gonna have a dull moment around Eric Laura. And for him to have an opportunity to uh, surpass or be spoken in the same breath as Jerry Rice, I mean, what an honor. And I know that humbly he, would, he sees it as an honor as well. I mean, he's been lucky. He's been blessed, and we're fortunate to have him for three games and hopefully more long, I mean, longer than that in a playoff run. Now, the guy who's been throwing the ball all year and for the last two years, Jimmy Garoppolo, it's the first week we've come and done the show where we haven't talked about Jimmy broke this record from Sean Payton or Tony Romo or somebody else because he already has all those records. Now he's just how much distance can he put between himself and guys that follow him here at Eastern Illinois and even in the Ohio Valley Conference. 399 yards. Another good day for him, but we've kind of come to have some expectations. He now has nine straight games with 300 yards passing or more. And I know the number we talked about last week, nine straight games now with 200 yards or more. And you guys have been able to really get out of the gate very quickly in your OVC contest so far. You know, we really have. We've been fortunate. We've been blessed. You know, it's people talk about uh, statistics. I really don't get into statistics because when you're good at what you do, you don't have to look at the numbers. When you're not good at what you do, you look at the numbers. And it, it's amazing where we're at statistically, touchdowns, total offense, uh, all those things. And then when you start adding up how many quarters this, the, the, the starting unit did not play, how many games we've stopped in the third quarter, how many games we've stopped in the fourth quarter, how many games we've had a, a blessing to put twos and threes and backups in for experience, but what this offense, what those receivers, what the running backs, what this quarterback could have done if we had to play seven, eight games all the way to the fourth quarter. You know, s someone looked at me, I had, a, I had a reporter say to me, do you know that you took Jimmy Garoppolo out with 399 yards when he only needed one more yard for 400 yards? And I said, yes, I knew. But it's, it's not about those numbers, but I'll tell you what now, to see this football team play from the beginning to the end offensively in the games like early in the year against Northern Illinois, against San Diego State, against Southern Illinois, against Illinois State, which we eventually stopped in the fourth quarter. Those are the type of numbers that they're capable of if you allow them to play for four quarters. Now, I have to come back in this league next year. So <laughs> I've got to go against these coaches without a Jimmy Garoppolo, without an Eric Lohr. So I'm sensitive to that, and I'm sensitive to them because this is a delicate profession, and we're not trying to embarrass anybody. But sometimes with those guys, they're so good, it's hard to keep the score down. Now, I know the goal the other day was – or the goal every game is really to try to get around 100 plays. You guys were close against Tennessee Tech the other day, finished with 93. Disappointed, I know, that you didn't get to 100 plays, but you take out the fact that you didn't get two offensive drives because you had two long punt returns for touchdowns, which took away probably at least six plays there. It was a blessing. <laughs> it was a blessing that we, we didn't get to 100. I mean, how exciting is that to have two, kick, two punt returns, go back for touchdowns, have a third one for a touchdown, but a holding penalty uh, canceled it out. We're never going to uh, cry about that, so to speak. I was just excited to get back in the 90s, to be able to play at a tempo that we're capable of and to have somebody else trying to, you know, play re relatively quickly so that we can have more opportunities. But I, I, I would be amiss if I didn't say a lot of those 93 plays on offense was based off of what our defense did. I thought our defense had an outstanding day. I mean, they went out and really put it to them. And, got him in a bunch of three and outs. And uh, without that defense, we would, there's no way that we would have ran up the play total that we did without the play that K Coach McLeod did with the defensive guys and with the defensive coaching staff. Now, speaking of defense, your defense is going to have it, its hands full, to, so to say, this weekend in terms of numbers of plays. They're going to have to be out there. You guys play Murray State. Last year when you guys played, you set the FCS record for plays in a game combined between two teams, 210 plays. That, that's a lot of snaps of football. 
They got the play record and we got the win. And uh, we're happy with that. We're happy with that. Chris Hatcher likes to play fast. Murray State, they've been an up-tempo crew. And I believe they were the only up-tempo team until we came in and said that we were going to run up-tempo. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how many snaps uh, we get in in that football game because uh, there's no telling because this is the fastest offense uh, that I've ever had here. And uh, right now we're playing at a super, super fast tempo. Now, to look back at the game last year, you guys won 50-49 to in overtime. You had come off that game, a double overtime loss against Illinois State, and you have kind of have said that that decision that you made in that game was going to affect the way the rest of the season went. You guys went for two. You were successful and kind of laid out the cards for the rest of the year to unfold and, and to win. Had it not been successful, we don't know. But you, you kind of thought about that, and, and you, you touched on that, I know, last year, that that, that was really – the season kind of hinged on maybe on that one decision. You know, I, I really felt that at the Illinois State game, we had a double, over, o, double overtime loss there, and we, we went into overtime. We're doing these things. I just felt like I didn't see enough as a head coach. I was kind of too much in a, of an offensive coordinator and not enough of a head coach. And, uh, and pulling back and looking at the Illinois State loss, I, I just said, you know what, we should have went for two based off of what our offense was doing against their defense and what their offense was doing against our defense, that we should have tried to win that game on offense. So when the next game happened with Murray State and Chris Hatcher, you know, I think maybe it caught him by surprise that they got the ball first, they scored a touchdown against our defense, and they went for one in the first overtime. We got the ball second, scored a touchdown, and we just sent the two-point two point team out there. We weren't going to kick for one. We didn't want to go to a second overtime. And uh, he called a timeout, I think a little startled by it. And then I called a timeout just to ask, make sure the players knew what the play was. So it was a double timeout. And then we, we trotted our guys out there and we ran our play. And uh, uh, Eric Lohr threw a reverse pass to a Von Wise in the corner of the end zone. It's interesting because I was watching the game from last year. And if you watch the clip, you see Von Wise being talk, tackled, going out of bounds. You see the official raising his hands up in a touchdown and the next person you see is Chris Hatcher on the two yard line saying it was no good, no good. So it was a very, very emotional play. The sideline went crazy. The team ran out on the field. Eric Lohr is running around without his helmet on. And I didn't know what happened because I called the play and I walked back through the, through the team and all I did was look in the stands. I said, if everybody jumps up happy, that means we won. And if nobody jumps up, that probably means we lost. So I, I didn't even see the play alive. Uh, I got to see it the next day on Sunday, but the kids, I was for it, the kids were for it, the team was for it, it worked out in our, in our favor, and I really believe that was the changing point in our season because the belief changed. They believed they were winners, they didn't believe they were losers, and I think that that game was the launching pad to us winning the OVC Conference last year. Very good, Coach. Hopefully up in Murray, or down in Murray State this weekend, the fans will be jumping up and down and We'll be making some of the right calls, and we will wrap up this segment. We'll be right back with This Week in EIU Athletics. Panther fans, here's what's going on in Panther Athletics. The number two ranked EIU football team improved to 5-0 and in the OVC and 8-1 and overall with a 56-21 win at O'Brien Field over OVC rival Tennessee Tech. Volleyball with two OVC wins at Lance Arena this past weekend over UT Martin and Southeast Missouri State. They're now 9-3 and in the OVC and 15-10 and overall this season. Women's soccer wrapped up the regular season with a 2-1 loss at Lakeside Field to SIU Edwardsville. They finished the regular season 6-4 in the OVC and 6-13 overall. They head into the OVC tournament as the number five seed. Men's soccer dropping two matches this past week, one in non-conference and one in conference action. They fell 5-1 at number 23 ranked Wisconsin and lost a Summit League match to Nebraska Omaha at Lakeside Field 3-0. They're now 1-4-1 in Summit League play and 1-13-2 overall. Cross Country competed at the OVC Championships in Moorhead, Kentucky. The women placed third overall while the men placed fourth. Riley McInerney earned second team All-OVC in 12th place for the men. And Victoria Quarton earned second team All-OVC in 10th place for the women. And men's basketball with a tune-up to the regular season as they took on Oakland City in an exhibition match. The men's team won 73-64. Now here's what to watch for this week. On Thursday, women's soccer is at the OVC Tournament in Martin, Tennessee. They'll take on SIU Edwardsville at 4 o'clock. 
On Friday, women's soccer, if they won their game against SIU Edwardsville on Thursday, will compete at 4 o'clock down in Martin, Tennessee. Women's basketball with their season opener at 7 o'clock at Evansville. You can listen to that game on HitMix 88.9 WEIU. Volleyball with a 7 o'clock OVC match at Lance Arena against Jacksonville State. On Saturday, swimming is at Padovan Pool for an 11.30 meet with Evansville. And Panther football with an OVC road game at Murray State at 12 o'clock. You can listen to that game on HitMix 88.9 WEIU, or you can watch it at the OVC Digital Network. Volleyball with another OVC match at Lance Arena against Tennessee Tech at 2 o'clock. And men's basketball opens up their season. They're at Northwestern at 7.30. You can listen to that game on HitMix 88.9 WEIU, or you can watch the game on the Big Ten Network. On Sunday, women's soccer, if they won their previous two matches in the OVC tournament, will play at 1 o'clock for the OVC championship down in Martin, Tennessee. On Tuesday, volleyball with an OVC road match at SIU Edwardsville at 6 o'clock. And women's basketball with their home opener for the 2013-14 season. They'll take on longtime rival Indiana State at 7 o'clock. You can watch that game on WEIU-TV or listen to it on HitMix 88.9 WEIU. For Panther Sports Talk, I'm Ramin Kerbasyun. Cutting through, he's two on one, ahead to Blanford, a dunk. There's a good way to break about an eight minute scoring drought. Eastern Illinois Panther basketball is on WEIU. It's November and the new Panther basketball season is ready to tip off. And the home openers for both men's and women's teams can be seen on WEIU. The women take on Indiana State on November 12th. And on November 13th, the men battle Olivet Nazarene. It's Eastern Illinois Panther basketball, November 12th and 13th on WEIU. Your home for Panther basketball. Women's basketball season tips off this Friday in Evansville. The new era for women's basketball coach Debbie Black, 7 o'clock down there. Season preview with the head coach done by the voice of the Panthers, Mike Brad. up next. Talking about the Eastern Illinois women's basketball team, they open the season Friday with a game at Evansville. Joining us is the new coach of the Panthers, Debbie Black. She's in her first year here at EIU. And Debbie, before we talk about the team, let's talk a little bit about yourself. I know you played at St. Joseph, played in the WNBA, been at Ohio State for the last several years. Uh, yes, I've had um, I've been, probably my career is mostly playing, eight years as an assistant, 18 years as a professional, and um, sorry about my voice, that's what happens when you're coaching, but um, yeah, it's been a great career, and now I'm on my next step of my, my future. This is your first head coaching job that I'm aware of, at least. What is the, uh, the adjustment coming from an assistant coach at Ohio State to a head coach at Eastern Illinois? Well, you know, I think anytime you go from an assistant coach to a head coach, it's you're now running the show. You're not just sitting back giving suggestions, you're actually making decisions. So that's the difference between maybe being a point guard and an off guard. Point guard makes decisions, an off guard kind of goes along with the flow. So I'm making adjustments as far as this is, the, the team's gonna run the way I want it to run. Now, the team was is, was kind of set in a way when you got here. I mean, you came in a little bit late in the recruiting season, I suppose, and so it was, all, I assume, a little bit rushed kind of getting recruited in place and getting set for this year? Well, you know what? We have, we have a core of, we lost a lot of seniors, but we have a core of, you know, six or seven upperclassmen who haven't played a lot. But we're figuring out, you know, where they go, and you're correct. Recruiting, we haven't brought anybody new in, but we have the players that were here, and they're really doing a good job. Let's talk about then some of those players who figure to be kind of the key players we're going to see on the court a lot, at least early in the season. Well, you can't really go past Sabi. Sabi started last year. She's played, you know, a lot of minutes. Terrific, terrific player at the four and five. She's going to have a, I think they're going to have a hard time matching up with her. She can do a lot of things. She can shoot the three, go off the dribble, make decisions. Um, really solid player. And you can't go past Jordan, Jordan Crunk. Jordan Cronk's our point guard. She's going to lead the ship. So as far as Jordan goes, you know, she understands that. She knows that she has to um, do what she needs to do to get this team successful. Are there any uh, new players or maybe kids that haven't played a lot in the past who uh, are going to make a big impact that maybe the fans aren't that uh, knowledgeable about right now? Well, yeah, Taryn, Taryn and Morgan, both are seniors. You're going to see a lot of them. Um, Arnisha is a, a junior college transfer. You're going to see her. She's going to be an impact player immediately. So, and then we have a, a couple guards and the freshmen, Aaliyah and Georgia, who you're going to see really help us. If 
about how many people then do you think would be in the main rotation to start the year? Seven or eight. And it stays that way all year long, I guess, or does it ever expand past that? You know, um, that's a good question. I think it expands if they can figure it out. They determine if it expands. They think coaches determine that. You determine that at practice, how you're playing, if you know the plays, if you are if you give us effort. Because our theme for this year is effort. We're talking with EIU women's basketball coach Debbie Black. I know effort is what was sort of your hallmark as a player. You were nicknamed the pest, and I, I, I guess you're proud of that. Oh, you got to be kidding. You know what? If the other team had to worry about me, I wasn't a great scorer. I didn't do a lot of things. I'm not terribly tall, not terribly athletic, but... I played the game hard with passion. And if the other team's worried about me because I'm playing that way, you did something well. As far as the style of play for this team, other than that sort of intensity you're talking about right there, is there a style you have in mind? I mean, up tempo, half court, anything like that? You know, we have an interesting group. First of all, we're pretty big. We're big at all positions. The other thing is we can shoot, we can flat out shoot when our feet are set. We have some really good attributes. We need to. We need to understand as a team what we do well. So you're saying up tempo, I like to push it. We have a 10 second rule this year, so we need to cross that half court line, but also take good shots, not quick shots. So that's kind of the philosophy. Defense is defense, play it or sit. What have been the, I guess, the adjustments for you personally coming into this job? I, I would think you've been at the major level for the last seven years and now you're moving to the mid-major level. I would think that would be at least somewhat of an adjustment. Um, you know, I guess the adjustment is, I mean, the game of any sport, it's just a matter of playing it hard. The adjustment is probably a little bit more letting these guys know how good they are. There's a sense of that they don't think they're as good as they are. So I think there's a little bit more confidence they need as opposed to maybe at a higher level when you're eighth grade, you're recruited at all the major schools. You're kind of already told how good you are. These guys are pretty darn good. I played at all levels. I coached at a high level. They just need more reassurance. That's about it. Let's uh, look ahead on the schedule now. Friday night, you're at Evansville to open the year. Do you have any idea about the Evansville team you're going to be facing? But yeah, Evansville, is a, they're kind of a young team, six or seven freshmen. Um, they lost their leading scorer. They lost four seniors, I believe. They're going to be a little bit of a young team, but I know I kind of, kind of feel from tape their style of play. We just need to go in and take care of it. What we do well, as every coach says, I'm sure, but that's kind of how I feel, and establish who we are, Eastern Illinois. And then looking on past that on the non-conference schedule, you have a lot of Missouri Valley teams, a lot of Illinois and Midwest schools. You've got really a nice regional schedule, it looks like, at least from a fan's perspective, to start the year. Maybe not a coach's perspective. You know, I, don't, I like that. I don't mind that. And first of all, that's where we want to recruit from. We want our base from this area. We're not trying to get them from you know, other places. So I like people to know who we are, what we're about, and let's see what we can do. We'll, uh, we'll wish you good luck on Friday night. Thank you very much. Thank you. We close out this week's program with some highlights from the big win over Tennessee Tech, a record-setting day for Eric Laura. Also a reminder on the Panther Sports Radio Network, 12 noon, Murray State, Eastern Illinois, down in Murray, Kentucky this weekend. We hope everybody will listen, and thanks for watching, everybody, right here on WIU. Back to pass, two-man rush, screen pass, caught by McKinney, and he's going to be wrapped up and stopped by Dino Fonte. Ball popped loose, but he's down, a loss on the play. Good play by Fonte, a sophomore defensive tackle. There's the snap, Garoppolo back, pump fake, throwing the fade, left corner, Laura's got it! Touchdown, Eastern Illinois! A toe-tap pitch in the left corner of the end zone by Eric Laura. Garoppolo back, stands in the pocket, guns it deep, middle, caught, touchdown! Eric Laura with the catch at the two-yard line and goes in standing up. He's got two touchdowns in the first quarter today. 14 to nothing, Eastern Illinois has got the lead in the first quarter. Stone back, shovel pass completed, and again a loss on the play. Just as McKinney caught it, Dino Fonte jumped on it for a loss. Takes it at the 24. Shepard at the 25-30, up the middle, 35-40, breaks loose, 50. All he's got to do is beat the punter at the 40, 30, 20, 15, 10, 5, dives over, touchdown.
Eastern Illinois. Second time this year that Shepard Little has brought a punt back for a touchdown. Second and eight Panthers at their 22 as the sun comes out. Garoppolo back, looking to win this land over the middle. Tipped and caught by Gober, 40 at the 50, at the 40. He's in a foot race. He'll win. Gober will go all the way for the touchdown for Eastern Illinois. It was a tip pass, and it went right to Gober, who kept his concentration, pulled it in, and went in untouched. Well, the Panthers are good. On that play, they were lucky and good. And back to pass, four-man rush. They close in on him and sack him at the 16. Clinton Simpkins. Here's Jimmy on the call. Back to pass, looking, throwing Laura left side, and it is caught, I think. Touchdown, Eastern Illinois. Well-covered play. Laura against Marty Jones, and Laura came down with it on the left sideline and stayed inbounds for his third touchdown today. First down, 10 to go. There's a shotgun snap. Big hole at the middle, Duncan. 15 to the 10 to the 5. He's over. Touchdown for Eastern Illinois. Taylor Duncan went over right guard, and they blew open a big hole. They hit him around the 3, and he was able to stumble into the end zone for the touchdown. Laura up takes it on the 19. Laura up the middle of the 25, looks for room, finds it, 30, 35, 40. Laura in the clear at the 50, needs to beat the punter. Around him at the 30, and he will score, and there's no flags this time. Touchdown, Eastern Illinois, their second punt return for a touchdown today. Production for Panther Sports Talk is brought to you in part by Johnson's Automotive Service is a proud supporter of Panther Sports on WEIU. Johnson's is a complete car facility for all your automotive repair and maintenance needs. Johnson's Automotive Service, keeping your life running.